Dear Heavenly Father, Father God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you, Father, that you watched over us and you brought us to this place, oh God, to just come and learn more of you, to love more on you, and to fellowship in everything about you, oh God. Father God, I ask that you watch over those that had a heart to be here and weren't able to make it, and watch over those who are yet on their way, God. Give them traveling mercy. Father God, and I just ask that you pour out a special blessing to each and every one of us who is here on today, God, who is here and anxiously awaiting to hear about you, God, to hear about your word, oh God, to dive into your word and to allow your word to be more and more into us, to receive it, to receive everything that concerns you, that concerns us, oh God. And I thank you and I give you the glory and the praise. And I thank you in advance, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. What we talked about uh, last week, I, I went through, uh, I think we went through the, relay, uh, the rationalism and the ridicule. And now we're on the religion. And I think this is kind of right on time. Because I don't know how many of you, and I'm not going to name bash or anything like that, but I don't know how many of you heard or have been on Facebook or saw where there is, there's a pastor who is a well, world-renowned singer and is a pastor who has, I guess, I haven't seen all of the video. I started looking at some of the conversation he was having live and it kind of lost me and I just turned it off. I didn't have time because I couldn't understand where, where it was going or what was going on. But because on Facebook, social media, when people put things out there, I kind of try and look before I make any comment and I really haven't made any comments other than pastor. And we talked about it after prayer um, and I showed it to him. Um, but Apparently, this pastor is speaking and teaching that there is no hell. Yeah. That he is teaching and speaking there is no hell. And if I tell you the live feed, I'm sorry, Brother Addis, I'm going to try and stand still. Um, the live feed was on fire. I mean, people was lighting that thing up, responding and commenting, and it was just it was shocking to see how many people were falling for it. He has a millennial church, and you know our millennials are the most impressionable. They're the ones with that charisma, you know, they just ready to go, go, go. And a lot of times in that go, go, going, you missing, 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 missing the true doctrine and the word. So now it's, it's almost like it's appeasing and pleasing and satisfying them that they don't have anything to worry about. Because I really don't know how he went in the direction of that, what he's been teaching, that that came out. But, yes, um, it is out there that he is saying that there is no hell. Um, again, I'm not going to name bash or anything. I'm just picking on a, what was spoken because there were a lot of comments. There were comments from his family members. And we definitely want to continue to pray for the pastor and we want to continue to love on the pastor um, because sometimes you just, you don't know what a person's going through. You don't know how they, he arrived. I don't know how he arrived at that, but it just kind of blew my mind because we've been teaching on this and to see that. So this meant that really the, the seats should have been filled. The church should have been packed. Because we are teaching hell is real. Amen. And as we talked last week, Jesus spoke a whole lot about the realization of hell. That it is real and it is ready to take you on. And I'm hoping that repentance comes to those that are falling for that so that they don't make their way into that pit. Amen. So, um, like I said, it just kind of... Um, blew my mind one because of um, his music and um, 
We've even got family members that are over there. And I'm praying for her and anyone else that's, you know, there that um, God opened their eyes. Amen. So, God, we ask that you uh, help them. Um, religion. So today I'm speaking on religion and religion, um, the different ways hell is defined by different religious cultures. So again, hell is real. And glory to God, I pray that they pick up and get on the feed to see this because um, it talks about, oh, and that was one of the other things, a comment that was made. They said, then if that's the case, then God is fake. So you see how this is leading to other things. And again, when you don't know the word and you haven't attempted to pick up the word, even a babe, if you are being led by uh, entertainment, reputation, all of that, you know, we just, we just need to be praying. We just need to be praying because we are, no, we do know, I was talking to a coworker. We are in the final days. This, this is. What we are seeing is the fulfillment of the Bible. We don't know the day or the hour. We don't know if it's tomorrow or years to come. But whatever it is, this is the final days. We are in that final that final finale. Oops, I'm sorry, y'all. We are in that. So, um, I was reading on the religion, and it said, there is a God, but he is a God of love, and therefore would not and could not send anyone to hell. This, of course, is the position of the liberalism, that those who are liberal in their way of thinking kind of like this there is no hell that's your liberal way of thinking and I thought about sometimes people will come up with their religious beliefs to justify their way of life their sin so if you are teaching, and that's anyone, not just this situation, but anyone. If you're teaching anything contrary to the Bible, then you're teaching your flesh because you're teaching to accommodate what you're doing. So that way, if you get caught, you can justify it. Uh, amen? <laughs> you can justify it. So... I have wrote down while I was thinking on this, what causes a man, and we're still talking about hell, what causes a man to walk away from the truth of God and teach what will make him feel comfortable? Um, what sounds good, what pleases and tickles the ear, just like pastor talks about how you, we don't get into cars and houses and, you know, preaching that. We're not saying God is not blessing that and God is not opening up the window of heaven and pouring that out and giving you finance and sound wisdom to achieve those things and that God may send that word to pastor to say, tell them it's time. It's time. He's positioned everything in the uh, proper place so that when they go, the words will be yes, 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 where it's always been no, 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 no. So it's not to say that, but a lot of times people speak and teach religion according to their religious needs, and that's to fill the, temp the building. I'm not going to call it a temple because if you're not speaking and preaching the word of God, you're just filling a building because he's not in the midst of it. You want to teach and preach in a temple where his presence is felt, that you see the signs and the wonders, the miracles. But if we're just teaching and preaching according to our flesh, then we're just in a building, which this is. But we want to make sure when you come in here, how we, you know how people come and visit with us and they feel the presence of God. 
We want that. We want that. We want them to feel God's presence because we're speaking God's word. So I thought about that and I was like, so it's easy to say there's no hell because you want to justify your actions, your course, what you're doing. So I was reading this and, um, and it was talking about how a lot of the uh, theologians and those who teach in a liberal setting, um, they downplay that doctrine, the doctrine of hell, because of their Christianity, their beliefs, their cults, as they put it. And uh, they have one common ground, that there is no hell. That's what causes them to become a cult. They all believe in that same thing. So it said the Christian Science Church defines hell as an era of mortal mind. An era of mortal mind. So that means that, and Pastor, help me on this one. The mortal mind that's here. So I'm thinking that's what's happened with this situation. Mortal mind. Satan has got into you to make you believe that what you feel and think is above what God said. Not what God believes, but what God said and what God has put in place. So your mentality, mindset, allows you to believe that there's no such thing. When you've been taught you have studied the word and it's in the word, but your mindset because of your sin set <laughs> has caused you to come back and say that there is no such thing. Because again, you're justifying your actions. You're justifying what others are doing because sooner or later, it's gonna be exposed what you were trying to justify. What's done in the dark, we know, comes to the light. So you're trying to justify it by saying that so that when it comes to light, then you would have those to believe, well, he's done no wrong. There is no hell. He's still going to heaven, so it's okay to keep doing what you're doing. Okay, so then it talks about the Jehovah Witnesses. I wish Elder was here for this one. They teach that the wicked will simply be alienated. So it's like, pew, 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 pew. you go. Where are you going? I don't know. But you're alienated. Alienated from what? And where are you going? You're, you're just alienated. So it's almost like those science fiction, you just... Vaporize, you gone, you're alienated. Or alienated means that you're set apart. Set apart where and how long? Because you know this body is going to return to the dust. It's going to die. So what are you an alienated? So when they said that, and I'm sorry, I don't know much about, that's why I wish Elder was here, about that culture of the Jehovah Witness, the religion. But I'd like to have been able to find out alienated what do you mean where are you going you're alienated but that's what they believe you're set apart from um, you're removed you're banished <laughs> you're gone you disappear you're no longer a part of but where are you a part, not a part of anymore? Pastor? So, you know, um, let me get the mic. You, you, you hit the nail on the head when you said that people, people they, they, they tend to gravitate to something that, is, that sounds good to them mm -hmm. and sounds reasonable to them. Mm -hmm. And then once it sounds reasonable, then they latch on. Mm -hmm. That's how the enemy uses teachers who are pretty much smart. Mm -hmm. He knows how to give, he knows how to put the right person 
in front of the people to, to try to convince them that there is no hell. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, the Bible says, well, Jesus said, I came to save the lost. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I came to save sinners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at the word save. It means to rescue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. to, 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 to gather you and to, yeah. and to bring you in. And what is he rescuing you from? Exactly. There's no hell. Yeah. What is he, is what he is rescuing, rescuing you from, from, from heaven? What was the purpose of the cross? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, he, he did all of this. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the Bible said that hell was created mm -hmm. for the devil and his angels. Mm -hmm. Right? It wasn't intended for man. <laughs> and he said, but it had enlarged itself. Mm -hmm. God is not playing no games when it comes to people whose names are not written in the Lamb's yeah. book of life. Why would he require me? Why are he gonna require me to live holy? Mm -hmm. And you go party and do all you want to do, mm -hmm. and then we all end up in the same place. No. Amen. And and that's the same thing when it talks about Lazarus the beggar. Um in Luke and how um, Luke 16, 19, and 26. And it talked about how there were two, the rich man and the beggar. And Lazarus was the beggar. And I don't think they ever gave the rich man a name. He was just called the rich man because it, his life, it was important, but it wasn't, it was important enough to, I look at it this way, it was important enough to tell his story because it talks about those of us who didn't receive the word, turned our back on the word, didn't accept Christ. So Lazarus was the beggar and he waited by the gate and all he asked for was the crumbs. The beggar wouldn't give him, I mean the rich man had it all had the finest linen, he had the color of royalty, purple. He was clothed in it. And he asked for something, and all he asked was for the crumbs. But the rich man failed mm -mm, to see the importance of giving him that. Key word here, and I talked about that last Thursday. They both died. Now, hell, <laughs> received the rich man. Abraham rested Lazarus in the comfort of his bosom, heaven. The rich man was able to see the difference. He's in hell. And hell talks about how you have your memory, you have your sight. So he sees, and the Bible is clearly showing you that he sees, he feels, he hungers, he hurts, he pains. So he's able to see afar off, but clearly enough to see, hey, that's the beggar in Abraham's bosom. This is the part that got me. Now he's still, he's the rich man. Now he's still got his pride is the way I looked at it. Because you know who he at? Send the beggar to me. Send Lazarus to me. And just tell him to dip his, still come and serve me. Just dip his fingertip in the water to cool my tongue. He's still asking him to come and serve him. So it's almost like you're in a place, but you still haven't understood that you're in a place of torment. You're in hell. So now he wants him to go and tell his brethren so that they too won't end up here. But I was just, when I read that, I was like, wow, even still, I felt that his pride was still there because now I want you to send the beggar to me. That's a good point. But let me tell you, the people who fight against hell, they'll use this scripture and say it was a peril. No. No. It's not a peril. Mm -mm. Anytime Jesus calls a name, it is not a peril. Amen. It is a real life situation. Other times he said there was a certain man. Mm -hmm. There was a certain woman. Mm -hmm. And he uses it for an analogy. Mm -hmm. But in this case, he is trying to stress the reality mm -hmm. of a hell. Mm -hmm. And like you're pointing out, 
He said, listen, when he got down there, he had all of his faculties. Mm -hmm. He could hear, mm -hmm. he could touch, touch, see, he could think, feel, and he could see mm -hmm. all of that. He still all that that because because God, even though the body will be destroyed, your soul can never die. Mm -hmm. wow. It has to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God is not going to allow. Now he said all the liars, whoremongers, everybody, all of them gonna have their part mm -hmm. in the lake that, that burn with fire mm -hmm. and brimstone. brimstone. You may not get a touch of the fire, the brimstone gonna get you. <laughs> but they both gonna get you. Yeah, and last Thursday I taught when we taught about digging and all of that and dying and I gave the um, things that I had heard and seen and I talked about how again back to okay back to the rich man remember I said that I don't think I've ever seen a U-Haul fall in a hearse that's the same thing with the rich man all his riches in the world could not get him up out of hell could not cool his temper temperament of the burning that he was feeling. It could not cool his tongue, none of that. All the riches in the world were not able to cool that. And he still was trying to get assistance from the one that when you had the opportunity to help him, who knows? He could have brought forth the word. He could have received salvation. But because of his riches and his self-centeredness and his pride, he ended up in a, a real hell. hell. Amen. Amen. A lot of people, they argue that, I'm going to leave it alone further. A lot of people argue the point that, you know, why did the rich man go to hell? Because he had all them riches? No. And that wasn't the case. Why did the, why did the poor man go to heaven? Because he had nothing? No. 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 It was what they believed. Believe. And it's what they practiced. And believe. Yeah. He, he, was, he was saved mm -hmm. and broke. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Man, I can be there all day. Anyway, but he, he was, was resting in the bosom of Abraham. Uh -huh. He was saved, but, but God said, you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm going to take him on in. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Amen. Rich man, you had your good day. And, and he, he had, had his, his chance. chance. He had his chance. Now, it talks about also the Mormons. It says the Mormons believe in hell, but not as an endless existence. They teach that life after death involves three levels. And Pastor, you're going to have to help me with these words. Um, Solicito, terrestrial, cel no. Celestial, yes, yeah, celestial, terrestrial, and T E L E S T I A. T E L E S. T-I-A. Tell, tell. Okay. The celestial level includes Mormons in an intermediate state who will eventually become gods. Okay. The terrestrial level includes Christians and other persons who rejected the Mormon message. Hmm. The, I want to say it's tel telestial level is reserved for those certainly, no, those currently in hell who await a final resurrection. Mormons teach that these will ultimately be saved and not suffer punishment forever. Everyone is trying to find a way to say hell's not real and that there's an escape. So if you die, you still have an escape. That if you didn't accept Christ, you still have an escape. And we're going to teach on, I talked to pastor about something. I think my last subject is going to be the one that when Jesus descended the three days in the, the pit of hell. And they're still trying to say that there's a way out. That they have a way out. So I think that's kind of what people are getting caught in that false belief or that false teaching that hell's not real that you have an escape that it's okay to live on this side of the earth and do whatever you want however you want and no matter what you do when the day comes and your your name is called you're, you die 
You go to hell, but that's going to be for a little while because you're going to a place where you can rest until Jesus comes and when he resurrects you, it's all good. Or you die and it's still all good no matter what sins you, you committed that you're still going to make it into heaven. And I'm like, okay. Here's something that I don't understand about how in all of these different religions we have on this earth, how did they get it wrong? I mean, when Jesus, you know, he died and went to the cross, I know they didn't believe, you know, mm -hmm. which, uh, the soldiers, not, they didn't believe mm -hmm. in Jesus you know, and, and what he was doing. But how did people today still get it wrong I mean, you got so many different religions. That do means that somebody's, I mean, there's going to be blood required on somebody's hands. Yes, sir. From yes. all of this that has been said wrong, and you knew the truth, mm -hmm. but you still went. You yeah. went. That's right. Yeah. You know, it talks about, um, I was listening to John uh, last night, the book of John, and it was talking about how, um, at the Last Supper and Jesus was um, the Passover and they were breaking bread and he was talking about eating the flesh and drinking his blood and how so many followers fell away because they didn't understand. They took it literally that he meant, uh, uh, you know, and that uh, cannibalism, right, really. They literally took it that way and they spoke that this is a harsh religion to follow, to eat your flesh and drink your blood. They did not understand what he meant. They did. And it talks about many who fell away. And Jesus also talked about how, I want to say it was in Luke, I believe, where he talked to the disciples and those that he was teaching. They saw Jesus face to face, saw the miracles, but yet still struggled to believe who he was. And he spoke about those who will not have the opportunity to see him face to face, but will pick up on the teaching and will believe. We have not seen the miracles that they saw. We did not have the opportunity for those years to walk in his, uh, with him. So it talks about that. So when you talk about how do people fall away, it's because of those things. Because they look at that it's a hard life. People get caught up in the glamour, you know, um, we had a while back we had gone out to eat with some friends and one of the uh, individuals made a comment you can't this you can't that you can't do that you know why don't i just all you can do is eat no there's more to it our job is to get out there and spread the good news that's what we're supposed to be doing that's, that's what we should be committed and dedicated do, to doing, spreading the good news, but not interpreting the news to make it what we want it to be, but to teach the word, the true word. So it makes it hard for a lot of people because it's not an easy walk, but it's a rewarding walk. It's a rewarding walk. It may not always seem easy, and yes, we go through, and that's where that you got to be careful because a lot of times people always teach that, oh, you're going to have this. You're going to have abundance of this. Well, yes, you are. Oh, you're going to be blessed with that. You're going to be, yes, you will. But there's still a process. We're still here on this earth. We still go through. But it's how we hold on. How we hold on. Because we know that there is a hell. We know that there is a God. We know and we confess with our mouth. 
that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. We accepted him because we know that he was in the desert and tempted 40 days of the devil. We know. So we know that heaven and hell is real and we know that there is a God and we know that his son gave us a way out through salvation. So we know that. So we know what our reward is. God reminds me, don't worry about man's reward. I got the reward for you that man can never talk. And he do. So in that, when I started reading about the different ways people teach, on the seventh day of Annas claimed that God will someday blot out all sin and sinners uh, and sinners and establish a new, a new, no, and establish a clean universe again. Here you go with this false teaching, this false teaching. So now you kind of, you know, okay, I can, I'm not totally there with them denouncing that hell is not real. But you see where people get caught up in religion, because we're talking about religion and hell. Religion, you make it where it appeases your, con your congregation, and you make it where your life looks like it's okay with the things that you're doing because of what you're teaching and what you're practicing. So you make it feel, I mean, this one, that was the one that got me. They claim that God will someday blot out all sin and sinners and establish a clean universe again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To say that everyone is welcome. Sure. As long as you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior and you repent, and you're born again. Here's another part to it, too. The Bible says, and I think it's in the Timothy, that in the last day, people are going to uh, have itching ears. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, 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 and it, Paul talks about false teachers. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the devil is very clever, and then he's very, he's, he's smart. He has to use someone who is very articulate, mm -hmm. someone who can get the lie over, to people who do not study the word. Watch this. That's now the it. teachers that he uses are ones that have come out of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Because they have, they they know the book. Mm -hmm. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the mm -hmm. power mm -hmm. thereof. And so the devil says, you know what? Let me teach him a new way. Mm -hmm. And now I got this following. I got mm -hmm. all these people. And what the Bible says, the blind leads the blind. Exactly. And they both gonna fall in the ditch. Mm -hmm. So we have to, we have to, the Bible says we have to fight mm -hmm. for what we believe in. Mm -hmm. We we don't fight, y'all. We struggling. Mm -hmm. Here, here's, here's where I'm at. Y'all may think I'm crazy. Y'all remember Elijah and the other prophets? He said, I'll tell you what, let's go up on Mount Calm. And let you call on your God. Mm -hmm. Let me call him mine. And the God that answered by fire, let him be God. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we challenging people today? Amen. Mm -hmm. why, why aren't we calling out these religions? Mm -hmm. why, why aren't we calling? Listen, man, you're a liar. That's a lie. The devil in you is lying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God said, we stand on his word. Well, that's your interpretation. No. God made it very simple for all of us mm -hmm. to understand. And another thing, people are not spiritual. Mm -hmm. Everything appeals to the flesh. Mm -hmm. Amen. It does. That's why they like preachers who can sing good. Mm -hmm. Preachers who, who got nice cars. Mm -hmm. They flock to them. Mm -hmm. They must know something. Mm -hmm. They don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. He preached something somebody been preaching 30 years ago. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to have a fresh anointing <coughs> and the Holy Spirit with discernment. And the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because God knows what you need on Sunday morning. Yes, he does. Yes. And it's, it's the preacher's responsibility to get from God what he wants to feed his people. Mm -hmm. He told Peter, he said, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't feed them anything. Feed them what I feed you. Amen. <laughs> Give them the word. The mm word. -hmm. Amen. So if people in their flesh, they, they don't want truth, bro. Mm -hmm. They don't want the truth. 
That's why your church, your, the churches are scared. That's it. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you teach doctrine like this right here, this is what it's going to be. Now, mm -hmm. if she would have put on Facebook and said, you know what, we're going to teach the blessing plan. Oh, it'd be packed. Oh, mm -hmm. oh I want to bless it. But we don't want to go through the process mm -hmm. of getting the real mm -hmm. blessing mm -hmm. that God has for us. Mm -hmm. But why would God give us a real blessing when we can't even manage the little stuff he gave us? No, that's good. That's good because I'm 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 almost done. Um, that, that was good. I would have got caught up in what you were saying, um, and it talks about um, the late. They say the late Bishop James Pike wrote, "A heaven of infinite bliss and a hell of infinite torment is an impossible contradiction." The kind of people who would qualify for heaven would not be in the bliss knowing that there were a lot of people in suffering with no chance with whatever for change. The have-nots, the underprivileged, those suitable for heaven would want to go to hell to be alongside them in their needs. Doesn't that sound, cr <laughs> Doesn't that sound crazy? But this is stuff people wrote or writing books and people are buying. And this is what people are teaching. Because, you know, how many of us, before we were saved and holier than thou, you know, that old saying, we would get out there, that we would make stupid comments not knowing, boy, we're going to party in hell. We're going to turn it up in hell. I mean, I grew up with people who would make those comments, would pour the alcohol over the grave. I'll see you in a little while. No, we're going to party. I'm like, really? Mm hmm. In the hell. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because they figured it was one big party. And that's what they're interpreting. Because if you look at your life on earth and somebody's telling you there's no hell or once saved, always saved. So that means I can do whatever I want. I'm going to make it in. There's no hell. So what difference does it make what I do? Because there's no place for me to go but to heaven. Because God loves me. He created me. So why would he put me in such a place like that? Key word. He didn't put, put you there. You chose to go there. Yes, we serve a loving God. He gives you a choice. Yes, he created us. But he still loves you enough to give you a choice. He gave us a choice. He made us, whom will you serve this day? Whom will you serve? He gave us a choice. So that choice was up to us. He also gives us understanding. We got some wisdom. If you picked up the word, and I don't care if you read nothing but Genesis, it speaks of the serpent in his place, hell. So if you're sitting somewhere and you see a change in the man or woman of God where they have been teaching the word and then all of a sudden er, there's a shift, you need to start praying for that man or woman of God. And if that shift keeps going on and then it cuts the corner, you can cut the corner going in the opposite direction out the door. Because you, are, you do not want to be responsible for following them and just like Pastor, uh, Brother Andy, someone said, falling off a cliff because that's all you're going to do. Now you're going to give up everything you believed and trusted God for and believing and knowing salvation and there is a heaven and a hell. Now you're going to think it's not real and you're going to follow that false teaching and then you're going to find yourself falling off the cliff. When you know enough, but because it tickles your ear, it sounds fancy, 
It's not really holding you accountable. Now you're going to say, I'm going to give up everything I believed, everything my grandma, my big mama, my papa, and all them taught and showed me, everything I learned in Bible study, everything I was taught in vacation Bible school, all of that, everything I learned in Sunday school was a lie. Because one person says, or a couple of religions say, that they have their interpretation of hell, but the word, but then you have your own Bible too. Hmm. Amen? You have picked up your own Bible, your own words, you created it to cater to what you're teaching. So now you've got all these religions, you got all these people following a false religion. They said the, the gate is narrow. Okay? <laughs> Destruction. But that, mm, that gate is going to be hard. Um, and God even talks in, I read this in Isaiah. He talks, uh, God is speaking. Um, God has promised that he will bring forth all men from hell, the prison of house of death. They will all still stand before him for judgment. That's just judgment. It doesn't mean that, that you're not I going to. not sin against thee. Show me your will. Show me your 